Hey folks, welcome to the Python QGIS tutorial, also known as PyQGIS. If you didn't know this, you can write Python code in QGIS to automate a ton of different workflows and processes. This tutorial is going to get us started on it, and then we don't have time to cover everything here. There's a lot to cover. If you're interested in this and want more step-by-step -step guidance after what I give you here, I have a full course on this on geospatialschool.com. It's linked down below in the description. But for now, let's get started on the basics of QGIS with Python. So we're going to work with the QGIS Python console, which is super easy to set up. It requires basically no setup, uh, which means you can start right away. So go to plugins and go to Python console. And this will open up a Python console that looks like this. So right here, I can type Python commands straight into the console. So for example, uh, if I wanna do some math, um, so I can do A equals one plus two, and then I can print out A and you can see that it's three. Uh, I can import different libraries, I can import NumPy as NP, uh, then I can do np.array, one, two, three, um, and you'll see that this prints out an array just like that. So this is just a Python console. It's linked up to a Python interpreter that has all the QGIS resources installed on it. This is the best way to use QGIS Python. Uh, you can, if you're experienced with this, you can go and you can set this up in a different IDE. Um, but if you're new to Python, new to this, I would recommend just doing everything here in QGIS. It's simple to do. Now I wanna show you something else here, uh, a couple of things. So first we have this broom button where you can clean, um, clean up the code we've already run. Um, this will run code here run a command, or you can hit enter to run a command. This is our editor, which you will find very useful. So over here, instead of typing single, single commands and hitting enter, we can type an entire script, and we can use this button to run that script. We can save this script uh, to open and run later. And so this is where I'm gonna be doing most of the work here, is in this editor, uh, so that we can save our work and see as we build out the code. Now, all the code I'm putting in here, you can copy and paste. I have an article on this on opensourceoptions.com, um, a free article. You can go and copy and paste all the code we're gonna go over today from that article, and that will be linked in the description. Okay, so we've got our console open. Let's go and start writing some code. And the first thing I wanna do is add a vector layer. Um, it's really easy to add a vector layer to QGIS. So let's just um, give it a file name. And this is going to be a shape file of states of the United States. And I'm going to give it the file location. This is data from the full course, which you will have access to if you decide that you want to take it. And hopefully I typed that correctly. Okay, that's the file path to a state. Now, to add this to the QGIS interface is super simple. I'm going to type iFace interface, which references the QGIS interface. You can see it pops up with the autocomplete here. And then I'm going to do dot add vector layer. And you can see that pops up in autocomplete here. Um, and now I need to give it a few things. If I start open those parentheses, you can see I need to give it three Q strings. And this is referring to the PyQt module, which uh, uses a Q string that's specific to Q. But it's just a string, okay? The first one is the file name. So I'm gonna give it fn states. Um, the next one is a layer name. I'm gonna leave that empty and it will give it just my file name, which is this tl2019usstate.shp. And then we need to give it a, a provider. We'll use OGR. Um, I just recommend using OGR for all your all your shape files, all your vector files that you're going to load, unless you have a specific reason not to. All right, and then once we have this, 
we can go ahead and hit run. Before I do that, I'm gonna go over to my settings here and I'm gonna adjust this code size for you if I can. Um, code editor, um, let's override the font. Let's change this to 16 and let's say okay. Okay, that's saying something about last tools. Okay, okay, that's fine. And we'll shrink that down. It's gonna be a little bit large here, but we should make it work. Okay, so you can see that code a little better now. So there's the code I've written. Now to run this script, I'm going to click this run button right here. And you can see it gives me this execute command where it executes the code. Okay, now you can see a layer's been added. I'm gonna slide this out of the way. And you can see here that I have my US states added to QGIS. Now I wanna make a note of something, and that is, if I run this again, let's see what happens. Run that again, and you can see it added the same layer again. Um, so you'll wanna remove these layers before running your script again, um, just so you don't get replicates. All right, so that's how easy it is to add a layer. Okay, now we can add another layer just as easily. Um, let's just add one more layer here. So let's do fn places equals, I'm just gonna copy this actually. This is gonna be the first part of the file path will stay the same. And then, um, and this will give us some places. So I'll come down here and I'll do iface.add vector layer fn places, uh, no layer name. We can give this a layer name just to show you the differences. Oops, it's really places. And then the provider will be OGR once again. And now we can run this code and you should see two layers get added. So clicking to run this script, currently executing, and there you go. You can see that places matches the name I gave it. Um, I have my states, and here are the places shown in green just for the state of Idaho. All right, so that's how we can add vector files. Now, one thing you may wanna do um, is do more than just add these files. You may wanna get information about them using Python. Let's go ahead and remove these layers for now. And what we can do instead of just doing iFace, we can assign this to a variable. So we get layer states and layer places. Now, uh, these will still get added to the interface, but I'll have access to properties of these layers through these variables. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just focus on the layer states. And let's say that I wanted to um, get the file name for this. Um, the way we can do that is, um, we'll call it the URI. So let's go URI states equals OIR states dot data provider which will be that OGR data provider. And we're gonna get the data source URI. And then let's print this out. So let's go print states file name, URI states. All right, and so this should print out this same file name I have here, but it just demonstrates how we can get a property. So let's go ahead and let's click run. And you can see right here over in my console, it's printed out state's file name and it's given me the path to that file. And as you can see, it's also added those files back in. Now you can see that we might be getting sick of removing these files manually. Um, we're not gonna cover how to remove those um, right now, but I am gonna show you how you can read these in without actually adding them to the interface 
because that's something that can be very useful. All right, so let's do that now. So let's just change this up a little bit. And instead of doing iFace.addVectorLayer, let's change this to QGS vector layer. Now I'm gonna leave the states at, or the places as it is so that we can see the differences. So places will still get added in. And let's just go ahead and print out the places file name while we're at it. And then it'll be layer, places, data provider, data source, URI. And you'll just see how this can work no matter how we load these in. So let's go ahead and hit run. So we get only one layer added in this time, but we still have those same properties for both states. We could also just print out the type of these two variables. Let's actually do that so to show you what I mean. We'll remove that. And so if I just, um, let's do states type and places type and we'll just change this to type lyr states and here type lyr places okay and now let's run this and we should see that these are both um, vector, vector types. Run, and you can see we get QGIS core, QGS vector layer, okay? And so that's how we can load those vector layers in without adding them to the console, which can indeed be very useful. So I'm gonna change this places back to QGS, or to QGS vector layer so that we're not just loading that in every time. All right, so there's some, some basics of getting that information. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these layers loaded in, but I'm going to delete that code there. And now I wanna show you how you can get information about the fields. And uh, if you're not sure what the fields are, actually, um, the fields are the columns in the attribute table. So, actually, let's uh, let's actually add one of these back in so we can take a look at it. And I'm going to comment out this line because so we'll maybe just use that later. I'm going to paste that in down here, and I'm going to do iface dot add vector layer, and let's run this. So we add that layer back in. There it is. Let's open the attribute table. All right. So here's our attribute table. Here are the fields for that attribute table. We have region, division, state FP, state NS, geo ID, all these different fields. Now, I'm gonna slide this out of the way so that we can focus on writing some code here that accesses these fields. Now, I'm gonna change this back to QGS vector layer so we don't add it in again. Um, hopefully it doesn't have a problem reading it even though it's already open. And now what we're going to do is we're going to access these fields. And we can access the fields. Let's just come over here actually. We can write, once we have this loaded, we can write commands in here. So we should be able to go layer states dot fields. Let's make sure this works. Oh, layer state, not layer state. Okay, and you can see that it prints out, there's this QGS core fields object. Now, what we can do here, is let's go back over to our script, and let's do for field in layer states dot fields. Now, the fields object is iterable, meaning it contains an entry for each field, and we're looping through that here. So here what we can do is we can print the field, so we'll see what that field looks like, and then we'll print field.name, and then we'll print field.type. 
Now you can find more, out more about this in the QGIS Python documentation, which is easily accessible online. Just make sure you're looking at version 3.0 plus version. A lot of changes happen in version three. Now, if I run this code, it's gonna print out the field, the field name and the field type. Let's go ahead and give this a run. Okay, you can see we had a lot of output here. Let's go up to the top to see if we can see where this starts. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna pull this attribute table over so we can take a look at these at the same time. Let's go back to the beginning and we'll take a look. So you can see that the QGS field gives us region and says it's a string type, which it looks like it's an integer, but it could be represented as a string. They are lined up on the left instead of the right. We could look at that in our code. So you can see it's a region, it's a string, and it has a length of 10. Same thing with division 10. Um, we can come down and look at all these. And if we look at some of these other ones, you can see that we have uh, a land, which is an integer 64. Um, with precision of four there. Okay, so you can see that we have these, or sorry, type four, sorry, these are numeric types, not the lengths, my apologies. But you can see that a string is type 10, uh, and then 64 is type four, and those are the only two types we have in this file. But that's how we can go through and access those fields. Now, we're, we don't have time to cover it in this tutorial, but you can also go in and change field values using um, QGIS, using Python. What I will show you how to do in this tutorial is how you can create a new feature and add it to an existing layer. So I'm gonna get rid of all this code right now. We're gonna load in uh, a different file. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of everything because I wanna not call, write out that file name again um, that I have set up for this. So we'll call this uh, file name roads. And I've made a copy of a shape file so I don't mess up uh, my existing one. And my roads layer is going to equal iFace. Uh, let's just do a QGS vector layer. FN roads. We won't give it a layer name and we'll use the OGR provider. Okay, so now to add a new feature, what I want to do here is I'm going to make a new variable called new feature, new feet. And we're going to create a QGS feature. And we have to give it fields here. So we're going to give it the fields from our roads layer. That way the fields match and that creates our feature. Okay. Now, before we start this actually, let's comment this out. Let's do iFace dot add vector layer. And let's show you what this looks like. So let's run this, this will add it in. Okay, let me slide this out of the way. So you can see here that we have some roads for the state of Idaho. You can see these two straight lines. Those are features I've added in um, in other demonstrations or in, in testing this out. Okay, so you can see those there and we'll add another feature in here ourselves. Now let's open up the attribute table. You can see that we have four attributes. Um, we have a linear ID. Um, we have a name, we have a type, and we have, you know, some other kind of code, okay? And you can see these all have the same thing um, because this is a file that I have made changes to. And you can see the two features I've added down here, okay? So that's what we're dealing with here. All right, I'm gonna remove this so that we don't have any problems um, adding a feature. I'm gonna change this back to Q 
QGS vector layer, and I'm going to uncomment this line of code. So we're now going to create a new feature. We know what our fields are. We have the linear ID, the full name, the RT type, and the MTFCC. Now, what we need to do is we need to set those attribute values. So we'll do new feet dot set attributes. And we can set them by passing a list. These are all string values, just so you know. So we're going to set a new ID, um, we'll call it 1006, um, and we'll uh, say adding a new feature on YouTube, and then we'll give it um, type 1 and uh, MTF 1. Okay, so close the list, close the parentheses. All right, so that gives us the features to be set. Now we need to give a geometry to this feature. So we'll call this variable geom. And we'll make a QGS geometry. And we want to make a, a line, or a, in this case, a polyline. So from polyline. And now a line is a collection of points, so we're going to give it a list of points. And those are defined as QGS points, so QGS point. And let's give it an X coordinate. Let's make it uh, oh negative one one one, and we'll uh, put this up at like forty six degrees. Close those parentheses, and then we'll give it just one more point, so it'll be a straight line. QGS point, and let's do negative 109 and we can make it a straight line or let's make it slope slightly down so to 45 degrees and then we can close the list and close the function all right so now we have this geometry and now you guessed it we need to set the geometry for our new feature just like that. So we have this new feature, it has attributes, and it has a geometry. We need to do one last thing, and that is add this feature to the uh, layer. So we'll get our layer, the data provider, add features. We're just going to add one in this case. We need to put it in a list because it's for multiple features. The list with a single element, and there we have it. Now let's come down here and let's do iface dot add vector layer, and um, let's give it fn rows. And we need to give it the layer name and the provider. Okay, so now we're going to run this code. It's going to add this feature, and when it's done, it's going to put this back. In our interface, we can take a look and see if it did what we expected. Let's go ahead and click Run. And fortunately, there are no errors. Slide this out of the way. And here's the line we added right over here. Now let's open this back up. And let's scroll down to the bottom and see if we have that. And you can see we have here uh, the ID 1006, adding a new feature on YouTube with type 1 and MTF1. So that's how you can add a new feature. And because we have programmed this, we could potentially put this in a loop if we, if we wanted to add multiple features. Okay, this is all we're going to cover for vector data in this tutorial. If you're interested in more about vector data, you can go take a look at the course, which is linked in the description. I have a table of contents available so you can see all the topics that will get covered. They include how to use tools, 
how to do selections uh, and things of that nature, how to do symbology. So if you're interested in more, um, go take a look at that. You can also learn all of this if you want to put in the time from the QGIS documentation. Now let's move on to working with raster data. Um, so we're going to start out by adding a raster layer. Uh, let's get cleaned up here. So I'm going to clean my console by clicking the broom button there. And I'm just going to delete all this code. Um, actually, I'm going to delete all this code to start out with. Um, so let's just get a file name here. And let's go into the raster data and USGS NED 13 and 45W116.img. So this is a digital elevation model that we're going to add in here. First, I'm going to remove my, uh, my roads. Okay. And we add in a raster layer just like a, um, a vector layer with one slight difference. So we do iface.add raster layer instead of add vector layer. And here we just specify the file name. We don't need to specify a layer name um, or a driver, although we can specify uh, the base name or the layer name. I'm not going to. All right, so if we hit run here, this will add that raster in. Take just a second. Oh, and maybe I have typed this file name incorrectly. Let me just double check this. Oh, I see what it is. So this should be underscore IMG. You can see that we got an error in valid data source um, that was popped up in the, in the console there, or in the, sorry, in the QGIS interface. Now I'll try to run this again that I have the correct file name. And there we can see a layer has been added. Let's slide this out of the way. There it is. Just popped up. So there's that digital elevation model that we just added in. Okay, let's go back and let's remove this. And let me show you how we can add that or load the layer without adding it to the interface. So we'll just comment this line of code out. So if we don't want to add it to the interface, we can go LYR equals, you guessed it, QGS raster layer file name. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just print out some basic raster properties. And so let's just make some print statements here and we'll do the height, um, which we get with layer dot height. So just some basic properties. We can do print, oops, width, LIR, LIR dot width and bands, LIR dot bands. All right, um, so this will print out just these basic things over in our console. Let's click run to do that. Oh, and bands is actually band count. My apologies, let's click run. There we go, you can see we have 10,813 um, rows that many columns, and just one band. Now, one other thing you might want to do here, um, the last thing I'm going to show you, is how to get raster data. So how to get the array of raster data. And it's going to be a little bit different than what we've done so far. We're going to use GDAL to do this. Uh, and GDAL is packaged up in the QGIS Python interpreter, so we don't have to do any installations. So we just need to come up here and import it. So let's do from OSGO import GDAL. If you're using an older version um, and this gives you an error, you can just, you might want to get rid of from OSGO and just import GDAL. All right, we're going to keep that file name the same. But now I'm going to get rid of all this code and we're going to load this in using GDAL. We're going to load it in as a GDAL data set. So we'll do ds equals gdal.open file name and then we'll do data equals ds.get raster band there's only one so we'll open the first band 
going to read as array. And then we're going to print the data shape. And that should be an equal sign. So let's go ahead and run this. And this will probably take just a second to run. So you can see our files executing over here, our script is executing. And there you can see that it's printed out our shape and it indeed matches what we printed out before. So this data variable is a numpy or numpy array that contains this many rows and this many columns. And so we can access those by indexing. So let's figure this out. So let's do print and we'll do data zero zero. This gives us the top left corner. We can print data 10812 10.812. This gives us the bottom right corner. And we can print data 5400 5400. And this gives us a point near the middle of the raster. Uh, so if we print this out, we're going to get some values in our console here. So let's go ahead and click run. Once again, takes just a second to do this. Oh, and it looks like we crashed. Let's see if I can open that console up again. That's interesting. I've never had this happen before. There we go. Console is back. Oh, it didn't totally crash. It just went away. It, it completed executing the script. So you can see that we get these elevation values for our raster printed out to the screen. Um, and that's the most important thing you're probably going to want to do with rasters. Uh, the full course also shows how you can use tools with rasters, things like slope uh, or merging or clipping. Uh, we're not going to cover that here. This is already a relatively long tutorial. But this gives you the basics of how to work with um, QGIS Python or PyQGIS. I hope you found it useful. Like I said, if you want more step-by-step -step instructions and you want the data I've used in this tutorial, uh, you can go check out the full online course. For the code, you can go check out the article that I've linked to in the description. And you can also check out the PyQGIS documentation to learn this stuff on your own if you want to do that. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you have a lot of success writing Python code for QGIS.